In part one of this video, we met Andre, an American who went homeless in the Philippines, and uh, we had some advice for him uh, after the interview, and also some of the notes of you had advice for him. And this is what happens when he took my advice and your advice. This is what happened next uh, to a homeless man in the Philippines. If you want to watch part one first, just click the link appearing on the right upper part of your screen now, and then come back and watch this. You were going to go to the U.S. Embassy and ask him if they'd fly you home. How did that go? Well, it took uh, like a, like uh, it took a, at least uh, maybe about eight nine days uh, working days uh, to get the uh, to get the process going and the ticket. Uh, it was it, it went it went well. The time was a bit long, but uh, it was just a matter of getting clearance from the uh, Philippine immigration, um, you know, to, to get that clearance so they could approve my uh, so the American embassy could approve my uh, flight ticket back to the states. So, but, so, uh, so when you went to the embassy, what did? What were the magic words you had to say to get him to listen to you? Because I know before you said you were emailing and you were phone calling and it wasn't working. What happened different this time? Well, this time, uh, it, I, when, I, when I went there, of course, I told the, you know, the, there's, no, there's no Americans there outside as far as uh, security. These are all Filipinos. These are, uh, all, they, are they are all Philippines. Uh, military and Philippine security. So when I told them uh, about my situation, uh, I'd gone there a couple of times before and they told me to get on the, on the website. And then uh, I, kept, I kept coming back and finally I, I, I met, uh, I encountered one, one security guard that I told him that I was homeless and I'm, I'm an American and I need assistance from my embassy. And uh, he was he was the one that uh, that contacted the people inside the embassy building, the, the American uh, counselor or not counselor, but the, the American uh, embassy worker that works there. So you you so you told him you were homeless, you're out of money, you're hungry. Uh, what were the words you said? The magic words that opened the door and brought an American out. Yeah, that was the thing. Uh, it was I told him I was homeless. And I had no money and living on the street. And uh, he told me to wait. And he contacted one of the uh, the Americans in the embassy building that worked there. And and I, I was able to talk to him outside. He let me go inside the building, but the American uh, uh, came outside and talked to me. So did you need your passport? Did you have to show them your passport at that moment when... You went to the gate? Yeah, most, de most definitely. You have to show them your passport. Uh, most definitely, yeah. Oh, so you show them your passport. You say, I'm homeless. I'm out of money. And then they come, American come out and talk to you? Yeah, that's correct. An American came out to talk to me, a caseworker or whatever you want to call him. Came out and talked to me. He told me then when he came out and talked to me, he asked me, uh, of course, where I was staying. I told, I told him I was staying in the street. I don't have no place to stay, so he said, "Okay, we're gonna get, we're gonna send you to a shelter," and uh, that's where he sent me to a shelter, and uh, he gave me some paperwork, and and that I had to fill out and bring it to, and bring it to him the next day. That first night, did did the embassy give you any money or anything? So you, or were you still homeless after the first night? No, they didn't give me no money. They just gave me a place to stay. Oh, they gave you a voucher, huh? Yeah, they gave me a voucher to stay in the. Uh, in the shelter for one day. The next day, when I went to the appointment, uh, to the appointment, they gave me, they 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 called the shelter and told them that I would be staying there until I received my flight ticket back to the United States. Then, and then he gave me, the embassy gave me uh, the money uh, uh, to cover the exit visa from the Philippines, which was. You know, like like uh, I don't know two, I don't know twenty uh, three thousand pesos, something like that. 
But back up for a second, uh, Andre, can you back up for a second? So you went to the embassy, they gave you a voucher, and they gave you some paperwork to fill out, didn't they? Yeah, they gave me some paperwork to fill out. And what was the main thing they wanted in that paperwork, other than your name, your social security number, maybe your passport or whatever? What's the main thing they wanted to do with that paperwork when they when you brought it back? They wanted to call the family members that I had in uh, that I have in the United States to see if possibly they could uh, help me. I had to list about five four to five uh, family members that on that on that paperwork so they could contact them and let them know that I was homeless and if they could uh, assist in helping me which they which they called and uh, unfortunately they were unable to to assist me when you brought the paperwork back the next day and did they call them while you were there or did they send you away and call the hotel and tell you they would call you back or what they do no they they called them while I was there and the and the embassy office so they called you, did, were you standing there when they called them or did they go back in another room and call them or? They wouldn't let me go in their office. Uh, you, you, they make you sit in a waiting area. And so they verified your family or whatever and, and tried to, and asked them if they wanted to help pay for you coming back, is that it? Yeah, uh, that, that's it, right there, yeah. And then when they uh -huh. didn't, when your family didn't have the money, the U.S. government paid it, is that right? Yes, uh, the U.S. government uh, paid it because my family did not have didn't have the money to 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 give me right and and so and they also paid your is that right uh, Andre Andre they paid for your um for the hotel you stayed in until the flight home that's correct and also uh, I told them I didn't have any money to give from the airport in Houston to the shelter uh, for a taxi so they gave me money uh, they told me how much is a taxi from the airport. Uh, and I had already searched that on Google, and I told them it was a minimum of uh, $89 from the airport to the to where I'm staying at the shelter. Right, and so they gave you 89 No, they gave me 120 it, Did you say it was eight or nine days later is when the flight happened? After I turned in my paperwork, it took about another six days before I got my ticket. And, and during that six days, they kept ex asking you to go to the, to the, the Philippines... Immigration is that right? Yeah, they uh, they kept asking me to go get a to go pay to go pay the uh, the exit stamp or exit visa, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they gave me the money for that, of course. And but, so, uh, and so they wanted okay. you to clear em embassy uh, immigration in the Philippines, so that because when they knew when you went to immigration at the airport on the day you left, that they would ask for that paperwork, right? Yeah, that's correct, and and. Uh, that's why, uh, I mean, that's why I went, they asked me to, I really didn't, I really did not have to go to the, to the Bureau of Immigration. I could have done, I could have done all this process at the airport. But, with that said, they wanted to make sure that, this is what the embassy told me. Actually, they want to make sure that I have, I, I do not have any, I did not have any grievances with, uh, uh, with immigration. Meaning, that my visa is up to date, and uh, I didn't owe anything on my on my visa either. Absolutely, yeah. So they wanted to keep things straight with the Philippines government and make sure that the U.S. citizen uh, was all up to date on all the fees and stuff, right? Yeah, that's correct. But uh, with that with that saying that, I mean, if you have if you have any issues with the Philippine government before you leave that country, they they will they will pick it up automatically at the airport. Immigration will pick it up. You know, it doesn't. It's like when I went to the immigration at uh, at at the immigration building uh, there in in Manila. Uh, they told me they said, "What are you doing here? We have immigration at the airport. You can go there and pay your when you leave the country. You can pay your uh, your exit visa." And I, like I told them, I said the American embassy asked me to come here and just get the receipt. He said, "Okay, it's up to you." And uh, uh, they have a new process where you can do it online. And that's what I did. So when I got when I got uh, when I did that online, I uh, I got an email from the uh, from the immigration with the receipt, and I printed that receipt out. And when I went to the airport, I went right through immigration, gave them my passport and that uh, Philippine uh, immigration receipt, saying stating that I paid the exit stamp already. They took that and. Uh, there was no issues.
so there's two other things that we talked about on our first call, Andre, that I would like you to talk about. One of them was that you were worried that you needed to have a vaccine to even go in the embassy or even to fly home, weren't you? Yeah, that's, that was one of my worries. Then. And so have you, been, have you been vaccinated? Did you need to be vaccinated to go home? I have not been vaccinated at this time because I'm an American citizen going back to uh, going back to this country. So, uh, but anybody that is not a, a American citizen has to show a full vaccination uh, certificate or a card. Okay, so you you did not get a vaccine and you still don't have a vaccine, but you were able to go home. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. The other issue that you were having trouble with is that they wanted you to book an appointment, and but the the system wasn't really helpful. Like you, you'd make phone calls, and no one would call back, and then you would they would send you emails of like a really long list of things to do, and the only thing that really worked for you was to just go right to the embassy and tell them that you were homeless and you had no money. Isn't that what the kind of the short story is? That is one hundred percent correct. That that is correct. Go straight to the embassy because. Uh, when you get online, it, it just goes from one robot to another robot and to another robot, and you don't get nothing accomplished. And so, so, so they flew you home. You're in Texas now, and you're on the ground on U.S. soil, aren't you? Yes, I'm in Texas now, U.S. soil. And they paid for your ticket. They paid for your accommodations until you flew, and they paid for the for the fees you needed to get through immigration. And they gave you 120 bucks to get from the from the airport in Houston to the shelter that you're staying at in the U.S., is that right? Yeah, that's correct. But it's very important to remember that you need to think, you need to think of every concern that you might have if you find yourself in my, if you find yourself in the situation that I was in. Because if, if, you, do not, if you do not tell them and you're already gone, it's, it's too late. So if, if you don't have if somebody's coming over here in my situation and they and they don't have transportation uh, money to pay for a taxi, don't have money to eat, don't have money to make a phone call when they when they're in the United States, all these all these issues need to be stated up front at the time that you're doing all this process. And then they'll and then they give you the money for it, don't they? Yeah, they'll give you the money. Uh, they'll ask you. They, they will ask you how much does it cost, to, uh, you know, for this, that, and the other, you know. How, how, much, how much does it cost for a meal? Well, you know, let's say it costs uh, uh, $36 for one day to eat. So you need to mention this. And then you tell them it takes about $90 to, to get a taxi from the airport to the shelter. So you mention that. And, uh, and they're writing all this down as you're, as you're talking. And, uh, and then at the... At the time that they give you the ticket, and they call you back to, to collect the ticket to fly home, they will give you an envelope with uh, American currency to cover all those uh, issues that you had mentioned. Now, one last thing that people need to, that I think pe that you understand, uh, Andre, and then through you I understand now too, and that is, is it true they take your passport once you're in the U.S. and then you, in order to get it back, you have to pay the money back that they that they've lent to you, is that it? When the American Embassy in the Philippines handed me my plane ticket, they asked me for my passport. I, I gave them my passport and they stamped the front page, meaning the passport is only, only, only acceptable to, for flying out of the country of the Philippines. When I landed in Los Angeles, I had to go through customs, right? Because that was the entry point. So when I went to, to the, through immigration or customs there in the airport, they took my pa passport and they told me there, they told me my passport was still valid, only not valid to go back to the Philippines. So that, that there I was confused. So I asked the immigration officer, I said, what does this mean? And the officer told me, you can use your passport to go to Colombia, to any other country, but the Philippines. Wow. And it sounds like maybe they, they the American embassy or the American barred me from going back to the Philippines is the way I understood it. I, I'm not sure, man. I was confused. 
I was confused, but uh, the immigration officer at the customs in Los Angeles told me the passport is is valid. You can travel with this passport. You can use it as a as a which uh, as an ID with this passport. You just cannot go back to the Philippines. That confused me right there. Why would the Philippines uh, bar me from coming back? So is it your understanding that you owe you have to pay them back at some point? What's your understanding about the the money they gave you? The money they gave me is not money given. It's a loan from the uh, from the State Department. That is a loan, meaning that any any assistance given to me, accommodation, meal, plane tickets, uh, extra currency, all this has to be be paid back. Uh, they give you 30 days to pay it back. But if you're homeless, how, how are you going to pay that back in 30 days? <laughs> what happens is you uh, you need to contact uh, you need to contact them and tell them your situation, and uh, and once you find a job, you start paying them back. All right, Andre. Well, thanks thanks for coming back on the channel. We really appreciate giving the update because, as you know, there's um, it happens from time to time that American will go homeless overseas and. and uh, and uh, we appreciate uh, finding out what the U.S. Embassy process is uh, so others can find out about it if they get themselves in a jam. All right, Mr. Dan, thank you very much for your help, always. And thank you very much. Uh, let the people know there that the people that reached out to me to help me, God bless them and their families. And uh, God bless wh whoever is, is listening to this, uh, that will listen or is listening to this update. God bless you all. To watch part one of this video, it's in the upper right hand corner of your screen right now.